swirling and stuff like that. Like that. Like that. So this is actually my bad example. So this well, is. Yeah, there's parts of it that look good. So this is this is an example. So we're gonna do two parts of color. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do two colors layered over here, two colors layered over here, and then we're gonna kind of blow them apart from each other. Just trying to get that on this camera. This is what happens if you blow them together because too many you know, mixing three three or more colors, you're gonna get muddiness, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what we're gonna try to avoid doing. So when we have our colors, we're gonna try to manipulate them away from each other rather than towards the middle. Yeah. So the first step here is we want to prepare a surface that's going to be uh, nice for paints to glide across. So I'm just going to use some white here. I'm going to have to mix some more white in a minute. Here. White what? This is just yeah. This is just this is just uh, just the same same kind of just gotcha. one part white, ten parts mixing medium. I'm going to get some on these canvases, and I'm going to have to definitely mix a lot more of this in a few minutes here. And then we're just going to use a flat brush to just kind of spread it. Thinly over the top of the canvas. Give our paint something to glide into. Some of those papers. No, oh, here. Okay. Just kind of facilitate the paint flowing. And this doesn't need to be neat by any stretch because we're covering this up with color. Why do you not get it all over so that when you run up against it, you got. Oh, I won't beat again. Well. I'm standing a good ways away. I am going to kind of try to pull it a little bit in the center here. Was that the thing? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> My little peach. Yes, one of the ladies said I could only get you in the restroom. Okay. Yes, one of the there's one somewhere down the hall somewhere. I've got my cam camera angled. It's got you from like here down in that's your fine. hands. Yeah, that's fine. But it's got the canvases. That's the most important part. Pull <laughs> some in the middle, he said. Yeah, you can kind of yeah pull some a little bit towards the center. And it looks like you're kind of on an angle here. I'm going to put oh, the um, I think uh, it was a little bit less on this canvas. Oh, okay. <laughs> That'll work. We did not know. Get that corner a little bit more on that one. We did not know you were doing it. I'm not here. Well, I am here tomorrow, but I'm not doing the demo. That's going to be a much simpler, just kind of color pencil blending techniques kind of demo. Not as fun as today. <laughs> All right, so the next step is we're going to take, well, you could do one pair of colors if you wanted, but uh, we've been working with two pairs of colors. Um, just kind of select either two you want. We're going to make sort of two overlaying colors here and then two overlaying colors here. Okay. So what do you what do you want to use for you go ahead. No, I'm going to use the yellow and the purple. Yellow and the purple? Or right. red or whatever it is. <laughs> so do you want to have like more of a light color and less yes. of a dark? Or mm -hmm. okay. So the first thing I'll do is make sure this is erased so it doesn't just start. I was gonna say something over. but I didn't wanna overstep my bounds. <laughs> You're fine. Relax. All right, we're going to start kind of closer to the center. We're just going to make a yes, spot like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then the purple goes in the center in the there. Yeah. Okay. Just a lesser amount of a second color. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now this is a Dutch pour technique? Yes. Okay. As, I, as I've been explained. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just clarifying. Sure. And then you wanted the, that one there too? Okay. And then on the other side, I don't want to select for you. Do you want more teal or more magenta on the other one? Magenta. More magenta? I say. Okay. Yeah. Let's get some brightness in there. Cool. Will do. Should we not be doing these at the same time? No, that's okay. I think he's able to observe us. <laughs> All right. This is the, the part that requires a little bit of finesse is coming up. Here's your, you want to do your second colors or are you all doing one? Up to you. So the trick now is we're going to try to coax a layer of white sort of over, over the colors. Um, to, yeah, just to kind of bury that layer that we just put in there. And this takes a little bit of finesse. Are they supposed it. to join one another? Not really, not yet. So I'm going to make sort of a puddle here okay. and I'm going to use this. All right. Screen printing sweetie to try to just 
make a little wave that kind of starts to go over our colors here. Um, don't want to over mix them at this stage, that's why I'm trying to do this a little delicately. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little bit more on the other side. And I'm going to have to mix some more white before we try this again. So actually this would work really well with really large canvases. Definitely. Uh, Sir, I did an 18 by 24 canvas in Dutch uh, pour. Yeah, that sounds fun. Well, the problem is, is uh, I had started my puddles down in a corner and then put the white over it and the problem I had was was I the didn't have enough no I didn't have enough to go all the way across oh, so then I had okay. to flip it turn it around and do a whole other puddle in the opposite corner okay my daughter-in-law's got that painting come to think of it actually I like the way that looks right now <laughs> kind of cool <laughs> you want to try that or you want me to just kind of do what I did <laughs> We'll trust you to... Uh, I didn't watch you. We came in when it was all done, so I didn't see. Right. This is sort of, we're kind of doing both things. Yes, I get it. I can handle that. All right. Don't lose the paint. on your damask tablecloth. I'm not right. doing this with my grandchildren. <laughs> oh, it's so fun with the grandchildren. Yeah, they're a little too young to be able to control what they're doing. They just end up being a mess. All right. So Artistic mess. Let me make a little bit of room here. As Bob Roths used to say, happy accidents. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it does happen. That's true. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is this heat gun, and the things to kind of be cognizant of is that if you get too close for too long to your canvas, it can form a skin, oh, it right. burns and dries, so what we're going to kind of be doing after I turn this on, you don't want to go at an angle, you're not going to get enough push that way, you don't want to have to go straight down like that, and we're just going to kind of punch in spots so that it's not in any one spot too long. Yeah. It won't matter in a minute here. Hmm. Interesting. This is just going to be kind of just getting the paint spread out a little bit just to start with, and then we're going to switch, switch the straws. The more paint that you have on your canvas, or the, I guess the more money you're willing to spend on paint, um, the more this is going to manipulate the paint. Because if there's more there, there's more to react with. Mm -hmm. right. Just avoid the mud. Right. Try to blow them apart from each other. <laughs> All right, let me get you guys some straws. Right. You can start doing your thing. Why don't you take your jacket off and try it? Oh, you know, just don't hug your canvas. I've never seen this done before. No, no, all right. Thank so you. So you know I've never used them yet. And then generally the, what I kind of just think about in my mind while I'm doing this is just trying to spread one color towards two, co two corners here and the other color towards the other two corners here. And if you start to get a little lightheaded, you can, you can use the paint stick to kind of just get the last couple well, of at least the, there. The tube is, de is a decent <laughs> Yeah. And uh, don't, don't blow too hard because you might get speckled. Or speckle me. <laughs> kind of get a feel for it before you decide how much pressure to use. I've got no blow up. Now if you, blow, if you blow it towards the yellow too much, you're going to get some mud. Okay. So yeah, feel free to walk around the other edge of the table and get from another direction if you want to. So you're getting a little cells there. That's the interaction between the two different kinds of medium I'm using there. Normally in dirty pour technique, you can mix in some, some silicone oil and then use a heat source like a torch to get the cells to develop. But uh, these ones are kind of just happening naturally because okay. of the two different compounds.
Well, I'm rather pleased with that. I'm being cautious, of course. And then the, the last thing I like to do is, uh, and I think you I'll leave it here. Me too, but I usually kind of wipe a little bit of this color around to the corner so it's more uniform. And then I can kind of blow with the uh, the uh, straw to kind of soften that spot that I used a knife for. So in this case, I'll just sure. do a little bit right here. Okay. And then if you just kind of blow in a couple spots there, you can it softens it up a little bit. <laughs> she might be tempted, you know. No, they're laughing because I had to move around this side of the table. <laughs> Give her enough elbow room. She's trying well, to I, create I bent, I bent more than over half to the table. Try to. I haven't been able to. <laughs> This is a nice technique when you feel like you like your design initially and you don't want to just ruin it just for the sake of getting it to the edge of the canvas. I'll let you do your thing right now. I love the wispies you're getting with oh, the purple right there. We have an art friend who does this. Yeah. She does a painting in the black and white show. Oh, really? Is that a uh, is that a uh, Sandra or Gail? It's Gail. Gail. Okay. With, um, they look My like shells. Her to, uh... They look like shells. Only she did them oh, with yeah. a ball and chain. Interesting. Yes. And when oh. I asked her to show me. She said, "Well, it's go to Blickers. They're having a demo on Saturday, and I'll explain it to you, <laughs> so that I don't have to explain." She did it with a ball chain. Yeah. You can try calling her up and asking her. And it's, you know it sounds like a string pull. It's as much information as you're going to get out of her. Okay. <laughs> she, she's the one that told us about coming here Saturday. She said, then I don't have to explain it to you. <laughs> or she might feel that she's, she's difficult. She's not explaining it. Her answer is, well, they do run into okay. You've never done this before, sir? Nope. I've done uh, alcoholic inks. Okay. We're artists. <laughs> I do alcohol inks too. Can I ask you a question? What is your favorite brand of ink? Which one do you like to we use the most? We just started using them, so I don't know that we have a feel for Ah, uh, okay. Color. What about you? We're still feeling our way. What brand you like? Well, I do use the Jacquard Pinatas over the Ranger only because they're more pigmented. Okay, I want, about how I'm starting to get the, the Bria Reese ones. Eh. No, I'm not familiar with those. The others I don't know if they can. Can I have a little bit more pink right there? Okay. I don't know. Bri Go ahead and keep going. I don't, oh, no, I don't want to. Oh, are you done? I absolutely love what you're doing with that pink right there. Oh, well, thank you. Have you ever tried using, uh, taking uh, Jaquard alcohol ink? You make it like a tray like this, a shallow tray with, with water, and then you drop the inks into the water? Oh, we've done no, that. I do the, I do, that's Petri style, and I do that in resin. The, uh, oh, other, okay. But other it's interesting, place. so it, it, the, uh, the medium immediately evaporates upon hitting the water, and it just leaves 
sort of like a raft of pigment floating on the top of the water. And then you can take little pieces or strips of uh, watercolor paper. Actually, I don't want to change it. I like it design. Oh, hydro dipping the paper. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we, yeah, we used to do that at the other Blick. <laughs> With him? Mm -hmm. Yes. What happened to the other store? They just had to close down. I think they just... Uh, they, the company said there they were some, not being productive, there, even though it was a, you know, it was a students were there. And they, it was a matter of the landlord. Oh, okay. So I was wondering that. because I have lived in this state for almost 20 years now, and I have never been over here. Can I get up my mom? Yeah. Well, yeah, wasn't there something that the landlord wanted an extra long... Very lucrative lease. I think they wanted to. I think they wanted to raise rent and then extend our lease by lock us in for like ten years or something. I don't know about the specifics exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, was, it was it was untenable. Yeah, it was untenable. Well, I'm done with mine. I don't want to tamper. Well, we'll let it sit there for a second, and then I can run over it a little bit with the heat gun, and then we'll just move it over to the drying table. Thank you. Do you ever go on YouTube to watch videos of other people? Uh, rarely. Okay. We do, but not that often. And well, there are all kinds of workshops out there. I just haven't. I didn't get your face, or your, I got the back of your hat a oh, couple of times. Doesn't matter. I don't mind. I'm trying to keep. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the edge of the cam, the edge of the canvas, this side. Yeah. Well, we appreciated that. I'm, I'm fine with being in. Uh, Public Man, that is very lovely. I love. <laughs> Just don't get too close. Your, you don't want your shirt color. Hmm? I didn't oh. interfere with I know you did. So, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we never paint together, <laughs> ever. Oh, that is. Well, my other half doesn't paint. Period. No, we paint at the same time at adjoining tables. We never paint together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never. We don't sit together. We don't talk. <laughs> it's better that way. He's fast. I'm slow. He's got a big. He's got a big arm reach. I have that problem. Well. Just watching videos of friends. I'm a fast resin artist, and I've got people that are slow resin artists. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want to try to make something, you can always take pictures of it. And make that. So we're not going to take these home. Okay. <laughs> can you finish this? This has been very, very interesting. It is an interesting method. It's a little bit. You feel like you have a little bit more control than a dirty pour. But it's also a little bit more work. Stuart! <laughs>